In this video, I want to explain how important it is to choose an appropriate step size for efficient running of the random walk metropolis algorithm. So the random walk metropolis algorithm, remember in Bayesian statistics is typically used to sample from the posterior using solely the numerator of Bayes' rule. So that's the likelihood times the prior. And the algorithm for sampling from the posterior goes something like this. The random walk metropolis algorithm starts off by sampling a value of theta zero from some proposal distribution, which in general is some arbitrary distribution. And then for each iteration t, then what we do is we, first of all, we generate a value of theta t primed, a proposed value of theta t, by sampling it from some jumping kernel. And in random walk metropolis, this jumping kernel satisfies a symmetry condition, which is that the probability of proposing theta t, given that we are at theta t minus one, is equal to the inverse of this, the probability that we would propose theta t minus one given theta t. And I've said probability here, but for continuous parameters, this is a probability density. So the typical distribution which satisfies these properties and is frequently used in this algorithm is a normal distribution which is centered on the previous value. So that's theta t minus one. And this normal distribution is set some arbitrary step size. And in this video, it's this quantity that we're gonna be talking about here, sigma. Then the next part of the algorithm is calculating a ratio and it's the ratio of the proposed unnormalized density. So it's P of X given theta T primed times P of theta T primed divided through by P of X given theta T minus one times P of theta T minus one. Then what we do is dependent on this ratio, we decide whether to accept our new proposed value of theta or to reject it and stay where we were. So if R is greater than U, where U is some uniformly distributed number between zero and one, and if this is the case, then our new value of theta T becomes theta T primed. Else in the circumstance where this is not true, our value of theta T stays as it was previously, so we stay where we were for the next iteration. Under a very general set of circumstances, the random walk metropolis algorithm is guaranteed to asymptotically converge to the posterior distribution. So by asymptotically here, we mean in an infinite sample. But typically, we don't have an infinite amount of time to run our sampler, and so what we're interested in is we're interested in its performance in a finite sample. And it turns out that the performance of this algorithm, as in how fast it converges to the posterior distribution, depends crucially on us choosing an appropriate value of sigma. If we choose sigma being too small, then we accept a relatively high proportion of steps, but it takes us a long time to explore posterior space. If sigma, by contrast, is too big, then because the majority of posterior space is of low probability density, then we reject a high proportion of steps, which means that we move around relatively inefficiently. Whereas if we get sigma just right, then we can sort of trade off both of these two extremes and we propose values that tend to be accepted a reasonable frequency of the time, and we can still move a relatively long distance in parameter space. But choice of sigma depends on the problem that we have. And so if you're using random walk metropolis, it's important that you calibrate it to your particular example. I'm now going to illustrate what I've been talking about in a particular example. So on the left here, I'm showing some arbitrary posterior distribution that I've drawn here. And so here we've got a two dimensional parameter vector and the probability distribution is the sort of vertical direction, which we can represent as a contour plot, which I'm showing here on the right. I'm first of all going to start off by running a random walk metropolis sampler with a small step size. And I'm going to start all of the samplers here in the bottom left. So now if I run this sampler, we can see here that I'm showing the accepted steps in green and the rejected steps in orange. And we can see here that we are proposing steps that are relatively small, which means that we're accepting a relatively high proportion of the steps, 
And remember, for all those steps that we reject, those shown in orange, we're remaining at the same location for the next iteration. And so we can see that even though we're accepting a relatively high proportion of the steps in this example, it's taking us a long time to move across posterior space, and we haven't even really reached the area of high density yet, even though I've run this sampler for 100 iterations. I now want to illustrate the case where we allow our Metropolis sampler to have a much larger step size. And so now, if I run this sampler, starting it in the same location, we can see that now the values that we're proposing are all over the place. And because the fact that most of posterior space is of low density, we're actually rejecting a relatively high proportion of our, our proposals. And so because of that, that means that whilst we're able to find the area of high density quite quickly, we're not very good at exploring it because most of our proposals lie outside of the area of high density. And so again, we can see that whilst in this case, we, after 100 samples, we have reached the area of high density, we haven't really explored it particularly well. So whilst I keep using the term the area of high density, what we're really after is exploring the area which contains the majority of probability mass. In this example, they happen to be in the same location, but in high dimensional examples, they can often occur in quite different areas of parameter space. But nonetheless, in this example, they basically are the same location, so I'm using them synonymously. I now want to illustrate the running of a Metropolis sampler where I've tuned the step size so that it's more appropriate to this distribution. So it's somewhere between the extremes of the two examples that I've previously shown. Now, if I run this sampler, starting it in the same location as before, we can see here that because of the fact that we're using reasonably large steps, we are able to find the area of high density quite quickly. But because those steps aren't too large, most of our proposals, once we're in the area of high density, tend also to be somewhere near the area of high density. And so what that means is we're able to explore the target density, the, the region of high density, that is, much more efficiently than we were able to if we were using much larger step sizes. And so now we can see that after 100 iterations, we are exploring the area of high density that much more quickly. So in summary, using a step size which is appropriate to a given distribution allows you to find the area of high density quite quickly, but it also allows you to explore it. I now want to illustrate how using an inappropriate step size can mean that it takes your sampling distribution longer to converge to the target distribution. So on the left panel here, I'm going to show the results for having too small a step size, on the right here, I'm going to show you the results for having too long a step size, and in the middle, I'm showing the sort of just right condition, which is somewhere between these two extremes. In the top here, I'm just showing a histogram of all the different values that I visit uh, in theta space. So I've got a two-dimensional parameter space here. And in the bottom, I'm just reconstructing the posterior using these samples that I obtain. So just running each of these samplers, we can see here that quite quickly, the just right case starts to have a shape which looks something like our target distribution, and so its reconstructed density looks reasonable. Similarly, after a sort of small, a reasonable amount of time, after the, the small step size has actually found the area of high probability mass, actually here, then the reconstructed probability starts to also look like the target density. In the too long case though, however, we can see that whilst our sampler is able to find the area of high probability mass quite quickly, it's very poor at exploring it. And so the reconstructed density here remains quite noisy over time. And so after 20,000 iterations, the too small case and the just right case end up with approximate target densities, which look pretty reasonable, whereas the too long case here is just quite noisy. So we see that it's crucial to determine the optimal step size for random walk metropolis for your particular application in order to ensure fast convergence to the posterior distribution.